is Allie Edwards and in this video I am going to be showing you how I put together the first documenting day in my Day in the Life album for 2020. Here you can see that I am just kind of figuring out what my formula is going to be. A lot of times when I do projects like this I like to follow a design formula that I set up and then repeat throughout the album. One thing you might notice right away is that I'm using a three by eight album, but I am printing my photos at the six by eight size. I decided to go ahead with this size uh, because I wanted to be able to have a fold over. I wanted to work with the pictures in that way. The three by eight size can be a little bit tricky. They are super um, narrow. Uh, I like printing photos that way, but this time I just decided to go ahead and play with the six by eight size and create the fold over, which allowed me to have a few more things outside of the page protector in this project. Again, as always, you can choose what works best for you. So what you can see what I'm doing here right now, I printed those photos to six by eight, and then I created a template using one of the first photos. I'm placing that on top of each one of my six by eight photos where I am then um, punching the holes with the six hole punch and then I'm using a bone folder to establish um, where that fold over is going to be. I didn't want it to fold all the way over, I just want it to fold part of the way over and then that folded piece is going to get covered with some pattern paper. I picked out three different fun patterns that will be linked below and um, linked for you in the supply list. Uh, one tip for you if you want to play around with doing this idea here is definitely to use the bone fold use the bone folder on the outside of your photo. I think on the first one I did it on the front and then it definitely it just doesn't look as good in the end. So I'm using Using the bone folder to establish the line that I'm going to fold and then I also use the bone folder to press down on the uh, crease there and make a make a stronger crease. But you could probably, you know, you could use something else instead of a bone folder. A bone folder is just a good thing to have if you're doing crafty stuff like this. But this is how a lot of times when I'm doing a project like this, um, I like to work. And it's basically you're working in production mode, right? I'm getting all of my, um, my photos in place. On the back of each one of those photos is where I'm going to add the 3 by 8 journaling card using the ING words. Those were the jumping off points for establishing my stories for this project and I'm just kind of laying them in the album right now so they are I, they are where they need to be when I pull those photos back out. Um, again, lots of different ways that you can approach this project. This is just kind of the way that I've decided to do it today. And you're going to see that full process here. So I have a title card that's part of the Day in the Life kit. There was a Day in the Life kit, there's an album bundle, and then there's a few additional products. But I simply just went ahead, um, stamped the date right on top of that um, title card, and then put it back inside. Now, in terms of the design formula that, that I am playing with here, my design formula basically starts with one of the shipping tags on top of the transparent dividers. Um, as you'll see in a minute here, I didn't use all of my transparent dividers uh, because I didn't take all of the, I didn't use all of the ING word um, pages. Also right there, I did have one extra photo. So I printed that one out at three by eight and put a uh, chipboard piece on top. Uh, if you click over to my blog post today, you can also see, or if you're on my blog post, you can see all of the images, um, still images from these as well to get a different sense of what the project looks like when it's completed. So I picked out three fun pattern papers. These are all um, recent ones that I just got from scrap, scrapbook.com. And I trimmed these to um, eight inches tall by two and a half inches wide. And then those got adhered onto the flap. I ended up using um, two strips of each of the patterns. And you know, depending on what you have there at home, you can just use something else. The I went with bright, um, colorful patterns. They're all from American Crafts from different designers um, in their new releases. Then on top of the pattern paper there, I also added a um, fabric adhesive circle and you'll see that in a minute. Um, I considered a couple things. The six, the three by eight journal cards don't cover up the holes. And so I thought about using washi tape, but then I, I had 
extra transparent dividers because I didn't use all of them like I just said and so I decided to use those instead as a way to cover up that hole the whole spot and it's not I didn't use the whole entire piece of the transparent dividers I just cut off what I needed so for a couple of them they already had the holes because the holes were already there right and then for other ones as you'll see in a few minutes um, I needed to uh, punch repunch holes again but that creates then basically the home of my content so I have the folded photo the flap with the pattern paper and the um, adhesive part or the adhesive fabric circle and then on the back side I have something to cover the holes some kind of pattern to cover the holes along with the journaling card and then I also took the half circle there was a half circle paper pad in the kit and that went on top of um, each one of my photos and I'm doing all of that first so now I'm going to follow that same exact uh, pattern again for this next ing word essentially um, and I varied the placement of of where the uh, half circles went um, throughout the album but then I'm taking another one of the transparencies I'm cutting it up um, again starting off with the places where the holes are um, and then for the last three I needed to punch new holes and you'll see that in a minute but and then and putting the journal card on top so this is all set up for me I'm doing all of this part first and then I'm going to go back in and tackle the actual journaling part um, and for me tackling the journaling part ended up being um, just copying what I had written written on my Instagram posts and then rewriting that onto the journal cards and you'll see that in a little bit. The second pattern that I used is from Vicki Booten and it is like a, a colorful raise I think is what I um, described it as and then again taking the um, one of the adhesive circles the fabric adhesive circles and placing that on top there I'm also using some mini uh, paper clips from Tim Holtz to kind of hold everything in place um, I went back and forth on whether I was going to actually keep those in there but I think that I am um, and and you'll see that as well you got to take them off obviously to uh, open up and, and see the photo but it's working just fine like that so here's another one where this was the third so I had three transparent dividers that I didn't end up using um, in the album and so I'm using those to create a pattern over the holes if you don't have extra transparencies you could use pattern paper to cover up the holes and then repunch them but to cover up that space there you could use washi tape um, lots of different options and then I went ahead and adhered the wearing on the back side the last pattern paper I used um, is also from American Crafts this is from the designer Jen Hadfield I think um, so I had rainbows I had this floral pattern and then I had the um, kind of burst or the the colorful rays from from Rick, from Vicky Booten and you can see that I'm trimming a little bit off on each one of those I just cut them to uh, two and a half inches wide by eight inches tall and then trimmed off the excess um, for each one as well and you can see as I'm going through, I'm going to go back in after I get all of the pattern papers adhered onto here and add some of the shipping tags onto each or add a shipping tag onto each one of the transparent dividers that go between each of the ING words. Um, so production mode is what I am doing right here where I'm just getting everything set up creating homes for my stories, adding on some of these uh, little embellishments, and um, just repeating that process throughout. So here's a good example. Now this is, I'm, I am adding on a new piece of the star, one of the star transparent dividers. And for that one, I'm gonna need to use my three hole or my six hole punch to punch holes again, uh, because the holes were already gone. So there I'm just using the punch and then sticking that um, inside and just temporarily kind of keeping it closed with those mini um, paper clips there. Uh, I like doing this kind of a project where it's I can get into production mode like this and this this for me forever you know for however many years I've been doing uh, memory keeping projects setting up a design formula for myself uh, often works really well and that way I'm not making a new decision every single time I come with you know I have new content that I'm wanting to include I'm able to just follow the formula that I set up for myself and have variety based on the patterns or variety based on the colors uh, as the whole thing comes together so definitely a little bit of trimming um, on these trimming with the three by eight cards too because 
I don't, I never cut them exactly right. Not the cards are cut perfect, but the, um, the pictures and, and those kinds of things. So they usually have a little bit of extra to cut off. And like I said, I repeated each of the patterns twice. Um, so the rainbows come up twice, that floral pattern comes up twice and the um, rays of color come up twice as well. And then on the back again on, I think, is this the last one? I think this is the last one. Um, going ahead and adding on the journaling card there, trimming off the extra and then punching the holes uh, to be able to have that back into the album. And I think I forget to do that and I try to put it in and then I'm punching the holes, there we go. So I believe that next up I added um, additional tags um, from the shipping tag set, or maybe I just went ahead and started writing. Yep, looks like I just went ahead and started writing. So now I'm pulling out my phone and I am going back to this day, which was earlier in March. Um, we're like in the third week of March right now, but the earlier in March, and I am finding my, um, how, what I journaled on each one of these. So I shared these on Instagram on the actual documenting day, and I'm using that as a holding place for my story. So now I'm able to go back in there and basically rewrite um, on most of these, I rewrote almost exactly what I had written on there. And some of them, I changed it up a little bit, um, or added a little bit more just so that it filled out more of the space on the journal card. I'm using a precision pen to write my journaling directly onto that journal card. And then also in case you guys are wondering, day in the life, what I've been doing the last couple of years is I do it twice a year now. And both times will fit into this um, three by eight album. Next time the lens that I will be using instead of the ING words will be gratitude. So we'll probably do it sometime in the fall. And I just keep all of these products in um, the envelope that the kit came in so that then later in the year, I'll be able to come back and use um, any more of these, the products that we released as part of this collection with this project. And then after that point, if I have anything extra, then that's when I would just um, put them back into my regular stash. Um, so I like to keep them separate until then. So I just kind of went through the shipping tags there and I'm using some of the smaller ones on top of the transparent uh, dividers. And then I also went ahead on the, and the ones that had a little bit of space for words or something else, I'm just using the rolling date stamp on there and then repeat stamping the March 5th date on there. I think that that looks kind of fun. Sometimes when I do something like this with transparencies, I will add things to the back of the tag. And this time I just decided to leave it, leave it blank. Uh, I don't think it needed anything extra um, on there. And I, that's another one of those things that is totally up to you as you make choices in your own project. You could put stickers on the back, you could add additional chipboard, um, other embellishments that you might have in your stash. You could add little photos if you wanted to add smaller photos that are um, you know, similar to the size of the those tags. You could do that as well. Uh, lots of different options for adding onto the back. I just decided that I was fine with having um, a blank spot on the back. But as you can see, I'm just going through, excuse me, the process of kind of copying and rewriting the journaling that I had added onto my photos in Instagram. And then I usually underline after the fact, which is what I'm doing um, on this one as well. So I think I ended up with six, I think there were six photos, six ING words from this day in the life. I've done this project a number of times in different ways over the years. Um, and you know, maybe we'll switch it up again next year. I'm not sure. I like having a, a separate little home, um, for it. Uh, I don't know if I love the ING words as much. I like having direction, um, for my journaling. So I like that part of it. Uh, but I feel like I might like the hourly approach or the, you know, where I'm getting a little bit more content throughout the course of the day. Um, that could just be me. I mean, I liked having the things directed, like here's what I'm wearing and here's what I'm listening to. I don't know. It could just be me today. Who knows what, what I'm talking about. Uh, when I had a little bit less journaling to add onto here, um, I made the width of the journaling um, less. So you can see that it didn't go all the way to the edges and then I underlined as well. 
On top of the half circles on the inside there, I'm basically just adding in um, just a few more sentiments that are related to um, whatever I was talking about um, on on the actual in the actual journaling itself. And I'm adding on another one of these tags. I really, really love these tags. I think these tags are super cute. They turned out great. Um, and just went ahead and added um, the repeat stamping on there as well. And then here I am continuing to move along. Again, writing down journaling on top of that half circle. Um, you, that's another place that you could add embellishments. If you're looking for you know options to add additional embellishments, they could definitely go there. Um, but I found just adding a few words onto there. Um, uh, made sense and added a little bit of context to the photo that large photo itself and you could write totally different things on there you could add the date or you could add the time um, that is another thing that could easily be added on there and I think that I saw one of our friends in our community Virginie I'm pretty sure that she uh, did six by eight photos as well and I think that that is what she did and added added a time onto those um, half circle embellishments Next up, I picked up the highs and lows tag from the shipping tag set and went ahead and added that on. I didn't really have any low, like this was a day that was pretty normal and pretty basic and I only left the house once to go pick up Anna or twice to take Anna to school and pick her up after school. Um, but the colors, I really liked adding in the colors of the highs and lows and there's always highs and lows in all of our um, stories like this as well. I also apologize, but it looks like I got the, the focus is a little bit higher um, on this one. So you're not seeing exactly what I wrote here, but you can definitely check it out, uh, in the, um, the blog post itself. And then you can also always scroll back on Instagram and see the actual wording that I used. Um, it was pretty basic. It was pretty routine. It was pretty day in the life kind of stuff. Um, you know, definitely always filled with um, giving thanks and also just trying to make sure that I get some of the basic stuff of what was going on um, on this particular day in, in the journaling there. Um, also, we also have digital options available for these products. So if you wanted to type your journaling instead of handwrite it, that's always an option. Sometimes that's easier with the digital products because you can add your journaling right onto them um, before you actually even print out the journaling cards. Um, in this case for me, I just was happy to go ahead and hand write on there. All right, we're getting close to the last one here, pulling it out. Um, it was fun with the floral paper. I really liked adding the fabric, the adhesive fabric circles, um, the icons onto the um, the pieces of the of the flowers there like that sunshine was able to fit right on top of that um, the yellow flower on the floral pattern paper uh, finishing up the last one there, adding the journaling in. And as always, I'm more than happy to answer any kinds of questions that you guys might have uh, related to these projects or the products that come in the kit or the album bundle. Um, I didn't, I definitely didn't use everything as you'll see, um, have some things left over to use for the next documenting day. And it's always fun to see the different ways that people work with the products as well and come up with different ways to tell their own stories and, and people that don't use the album as well, but that, um, incorporate them into something else. I thought a little bit about adding another tag, um, kind of to wrap it up with this la on this last one. But then I, as I, after I went through everything, I was like, ah, I'm just going to leave that last divider in place. And then, um, next time when I come to work on the second documenting day later in the year, I will, um, create some sort of a title card, uh, for that one there. And here you can just see a quick flip through as I go through and pull open each one of those, um, and notice there that I forgot to add journaling onto that half circle. So I'm filling that in. The last thing that I did, uh, for this project today was, I went ahead and stamped using the stamp set. The stamp set comes with the kit, um, stamped a day in the life on top of this um, piece of paper here that's inside the spine. I actually just recut a new piece. Sometimes those are really hard to get out and I stabbed mine a few too many times. Um, so I just cut another little piece of paper to the same size, used to stays on ink and the day in the life stamp. I also got a little bit of a 2020. I tried it with my rolling date stamp, just a little bit of the 2020 portion on there enough that you could see, um, it on the inside and did need to trim it down a little bit before sticking it in.